And welcome inside the Backstage Pass, a brand new day. And of course, our thanks to Eric Diamond for joining us here to kind of set the tone today for the shows. Again, presented by our friends at Bangtail Whiskey and the CadenGordonShow.com, today's best country mix up in Boston, Massachusetts, doing big things. And our friends at Jewelry uh, by Tommy, all made possible to send us to Nashville, Tennessee here in a few weeks for Country Radio Seminar coming up February 28th to March 1st and some big names Already signed up to be with us there at the Omni in person in the media room. And, of course, out there, too, at the Wild Beaver Saloon, March the 1st. We'll be broadcasting live for a live remote there from 5.30 to 10. And it's going to be a big party night, so bring your glass and your favorite wine, whiskey, whatever it is, and pour one back, too, as well. And we'll use that old Brantley Gilbert song, Bottoms Up, because it's going to be Bottoms Up that night, too, as well. well speaking of that, too, she's got a brand-new song out there. It's called Guilty across all those uh, digital platforms and i tell you scheduling has been crazy but i'm glad i finally get to catch up with her nicole ray fantastic canadian country artist how are you i'm great thanks so much for having me on the show well good to have you here finally we made this thing happen too as well jump yes. through some hoops and i'm like we got her on finally well, let's let's talk about you to begin this too the connection I always love the stories because they're fascinating and they're different for everybody out there the connection to music from a young age and kind of when that bug started to bite so for me, according to my mom, anyway, I apparently used to try to make up songs as a baby before <laughs> I could even speak. I just wanted to express myself in song. And from there, I was always the kid in like, you know, all the school musicals, the school choir, mm -hmm. took chorus lessons and piano. And it was always something that I wanted to do. And I actually did go to university for a year and then I dropped out and just decided to pursue music full time. <laughs> I love that story. Now talk about the influences growing up because everybody's got a little bit of something there and you've got a little bit of that, that country sound, but you can also do so much out there too that I love it. The musical influences growing up for you, who specifically did it for you? I was so all over the map. I listened to basically everything growing up, but I mean, powerhouse women were it for me. I was always a Shania Twain fan, Kelly Clarkson. I would listen mm -hmm. to all her albums on repeat. And I mean, if you want to go way back to the beginning, it really all started with the Spice Girls. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that era. Yes. <laughs> I remember that Spice Girls era too. No doubt about it. I love right? that. Song. Of course, it, I'm with you. I was just a fan of music growing up. And look at this, hosting a music show here that is pretty, predominantly country based but at the same time it's a little bit of everything uh, kind of going on too as well and definitely uh i tell you something's in the water in canada because i'm getting contacted by a lot of people out there too some great country artists uh cory marks i mean megan patrick tay bay coming up next week too as well there's so much what is it about canadian country that's now coming in and kind of impacting the united states you know it's cold there's nothing else for us to do but <laughs> inside and practice so <laughs> But it's true the the Canadian country industry is just growing and growing. I mean, just discovering new artists myself every day. There's more independent mm -hmm. artists coming up and we just have a huge, huge pool of talent here in Canada. I'm, I'm so proud to be part of the Canadian country industry. Well, I'm going to go back to one of your first albums and you may talk about this sometimes. You may not, but I love this album, Dig. I got a chance to check out a lot of songs on there too, including that title track, which was uh, fantastic. And definitely for me, it was like blown away by these songs. And there's one called Bow and Arrow, which I love listening to really set the tone for the record. I thought so. And for a lot of people out there, I'm sure some of your most requested songs when you play the live shows, tell me about Dig and, and just uh, hit on some highlights of that record. Oh my goodness. It feels like a lifetime ago now as that <laughs> record came out in 2015, I believe. Mm -hmm. And, but it was such a journey. I got to work with some amazing, amazing people on it. Uh, actually the producer was Douglas Romano, who I'm working again with now on some of my most recent tracks. And he took me down to Nashville actually to work with a bunch of writers. And that was kind of my first time co-writing and doing all those sorts of things for an album so it was a really great experience and so yeah some of those songs are still my favorites too for on stage i love bow and arrow especially when i got a, a fiddle player with me on the stage you you can't miss that one <laughs> that's a great song no doubt about it too and i loved uh like this to be love which i thought or I like this to be love i thought was a great song too as well and uh, of course, uh, your your truck's too loud. I thought that was another one too. That was just that good country song, which <laughs> a lot of times it is too loud too, because we jam a lot of the good music up in there too. But I know you've got a couple of performances for us today. Looking forward to that too at the same time. And I tell you what, I'm gonna take a timeout. 
let you get that guitar ready or the guitar player, I should say, the guitar player stepping in right there with that vacant seat. We'll come mm -hmm. back and definitely perform a few songs too as well. The new single, Guilty, across all the digital platforms from uh, Nicole Ray here on the program. Two Wise are a double Y. Make sure you check her out out there too across all the digital platforms. Our thanks to our friends over at Jewelry by Tommy. You know, since Nicole's probably got a, just a great Valentine's Day date coming up too. This is one thing you definitely want to do with this is get your significant other, spouse, friend, or family member some jewelry. And it's coming up February 14th. Uh, she's bedazzled with jewelry. <laughs> Looking for that perfect gift for the spouse, friend, or family member. Uh, jewelry by Tommy's got you covered. You can email Burley System at yahoo.com today to order B-U-E-H-R-L-E system at yahoo.com coming up with a here and of course a word from our other sponsors bangtail whiskey on kktc true country 99.9 and of course out there hightidecountry.net back in a flash stay tuned the bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base the front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp it has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish the Caden Gordon Show, today's best country mix, is a two-hour show playing independent and mainstream country music you know and love. Be sure to check it out at thecadengordonshow.com for more information on the show. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And back here on the show, Nicole Ray joining us here on the Backstage Passing and presented by our friends over at Bangtail Whiskey, the CadenGordonShow.com, today's best country mix in Boston. And, of course, out there, too, our friends at Jewelry by Tommy, too. Well, I tell you, I love this new single, Guilty. I always say dealer's choice because I've, I've jumped the gun before and say we're going to start with the single or is it going to be something else. Where would you like to start today? I think we should start with the single. All right, I that'll work. <laughs> here we go. All right, here it is, my brand new single, Guilty. Take me to the courthouse where I'll confess my sin. No need for a look. No, I'll never win. It's my great regret that I can't lie. I've got to lie. I swear, I sued you for the talk. You made me a believer. Oh, 
I love it there. Nicole Ray and Guilty, the latest single across all those digital platforms. Hey, I wanted to ask you about this movement, too. We talked about some of the, the great artists there, kind of at the top of the show, mentioned their names. But I think this is a great time to be a fan of country music and to be an artist in it, too, because you're seeing more ladies like yourself make a huge impact in this industry. With uh, We talked about Megan and what she's doing now. I've interviewed her several times here on the platform. Fantastic artist and just a great person in her own right, too. Lainey Wilson, Lindsay L., I mean, Ashley McBride, Carly Pierce. What does that do for you? How does that motivate you to continue your artistry in a certain way? Uh, it's so amazing to see. I mean, if we think back to the 90s in country music, it was a huge time for female artists. And somewhere along the way, they got a little lost. We, we've had a you know male-dominant industry for a while now. There was you know a whole bro country phase, as we called it, in country music. And... It's so exciting to see powerful women, you know, making a difference now and really standing up for what they have to say and, and sharing those big voices. It's amazing. And, and being somebody who really supports female empowerment, I just love to see the ladies succeeding. You know, I love to hear just as much when I talk to hit songwriters here on the program, and I've had my fair share of them. Wyatt McCubbin, Steve Dean, uh, Frank Myers, Kent Blasey, worked a lot of years with Garth Brooks. Frank Myers was I wrote a big hit uh, with John Michael Montgomery and just so many great people out there. And what a lot of people don't realize, it takes that songwriter, <coughs> excuse me, it takes that songwriter basically to kind of come up there and really create something and just magical and then send it off out there too, because everybody wants that song to be a number one hit out there too. And artists kind of get a hold of that and are able to really make it kind of come to life with their vocals and things like that. Uh, the important part of it I wanted to get from you is what do you enjoy most about the songwriting process? For me, it's just so much about being able to express my emotions through the song. I've never been the best person at explaining my emotions in real life. And I feel like putting it through music is the way that I can really express what I'm going through. And for me, like listening to music growing up, it was always about getting that feeling from songs in return. You know, it's like you'd listen to a song and you'd think, oh, hey, somebody else understands what I'm going through. And so for me, I, I hope that I can be as honest as I can during my songwriting process so that other people mm -hmm. can get that feeling from my music as well. Yeah, it makes me think a lot about, too. Remember that 90s country, what I grew up on, I love so much. is like you hear the first few bars or the first few notes of a song. And you just automatically from a jukebox or whatever it was, or like I said, when when the uh, CDs became popular or whatever the players were at the time or the iPods, all that good stuff too, showing my age there too, back in the 90s. But you can hear the first few, <laughs> first few bars of a tune and you're like, man, that's Joe Diffie. That's Tracy Lawrence. That's Clay Walker. That's this. That's George Strait. And I think that's starting to make a little bit of a comeback here too, because a lot of people, you, you see this album, Randall King, the number one album on iTunes country chart. And this old school sound for me, Zach Top, I just had on the show, uh, last week here, we're talking about this uh, neo-traditional sound. It's starting to make a comeback. I think it's good for the industry. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's also about the authentic sound. I think mm -hmm. for a while, you know, a lot of things got lost in the, this is the formula of the sound maybe. And I know country went very pop for a while, which it still is in a lot of ways. And I think people bringing back those traditional elements is really people bringing back like their original artistry, their authentic selves, their authentic voice. And I think that really resonates with fans when people, mm -hmm. when artists are singing, you know, from their true voice and not trying to craft into some sort of mold, that's where we resonate with the music more. That's an important piece of it, no doubt too, as well. And I love uh, this new single guilty across all the digital platforms. We're going to come back and talk about uh, one of my favorite albums. I got to listen to including a song, That'll make you think about things in life, too. The album's called Now and Then. We'll leave the song as a tease as we go to break here, too, as well. But definitely, it's a fantastic album called Now and Then. came out last February from Nicole Ray here, too. And, of course, the guys, do not screw up this Valentine's Day because you'll be sleeping in the doghouse, too, as well. Or should I say, well, I guess I could use the title of that song, The Graveyard. No, I should say that. Uh, at least the doghouse, too, as well. Uh, it's coming up around the corner. If you're looking for that perfect gift for your spouse, friend, or family member, Jewelry by Tommy's got you covered. You can email Burley System at Yahoo dot com today to order b u e h r l e system at yahoo.com quick time out kktc true country 99.9 and of course our friends at hightidecountry.net and always powered by the sports guys uh, podcast.com 
uh, coming up here in a few weeks. Uh, Robert Flores, MLB Network, will have a kickoff to spring training and Major League Baseball and all that good stuff there. I'm excited because we're just a few weeks out. Football needs to hurt and get over. Super Bowl and baseball's back again. We'll take a time out here uh, for our friends over at our stations, of course, and our sponsors. Back with Nicole, Nicole Ray. Stay tuned. The Caden Gordon Show. Today's best country mix is a two-hour show playing independent and mainstream country music you know and love. Be sure to check it out at thecadengordonshow.com for more information on the show. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And, of course, coming up next week, Tay Bay on the show right here, too, as well, on the Backstage Pass. And, of course, uh, Aaron Ray Vaughn and a whole lot more coming up next week, too. Kanan Cox coming by, too. Looking forward to talking to Kanan about his new single. And coming up here in a few weeks, Wade Hayes will be back with us. Some of that 90s country sound we talked about. Old school. He's got a new project that he's working on and a whole lot more here uh, back on KKTC True Country 99.9. And, of course, out there at uh, hightidecountry.net. Back here with Nicole Ray. Thanks to our sponsors for making it possible. CRS, Country Radio Seminar, coming up here in a few weeks. We'll be live in Nashville February 28th to March 1st, and I'm looking forward to it. March the 1st out there, too, at the Wild Beaver Saloon. And I can tell you right now, there's a good probably 20 to 25 artists coming to hang out with the Backstage Pass, drinking, dancing, having a good time at the Wild Beaver Saloon on Commerce. Nicole, it's it's going to be a party. I wish you could show up. I do. I wish I could, too. It's having like a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a lot. I just hope my voice holds up from that. And that may not be the only live broadcast during the evenings for those three <laughs> nights in, in Nashville. I'm going to take the Saturday, Nicole, March 2nd, just to decompress the entirely. Because no kidding. Yeah, you need a night off after. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's talk about the album. Uh, now and then, the song was referred to, too, no pun intended. But uh, I liked what you did with the, the song. This is a little backstory. So I actually wrote Now and Then with a good friend of mine, Craig Brooks. And it was my first write with him, actually. And I went into the write um, having thought of uh, some of the lines beforehand. Um, but I didn't know what the tagline was going to be. And so Craig came up with that. But the premise for me was it was based on a real life experience. It was about uh, an ex that I had from like way long ago, like the first boyfriend I had when I was 15. And after we broke up, I, I never spoke to him again. I have no idea like what he's up to in his life. And I ended up seeing him in a checkout aisle of a Walmart. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I really wonder like what happened to this guy's mm -hmm. life sit you know between now and then and so that was how the song was born <laughs> i tell you that's crazy and you never know where you're gonna run into somebody where you least expect it out there too <laughs> <laughs> all places there too at the same time uh, i gotta ask you about this one uh broken boys let's talk about this it sets the tone real well for the record i love songs that do that you do that very well on both albums you've put out too broken boys and where'd this came from? <laughs> Thank you. This was actually a song written by some other people, one being Megan Patrick, who I heard. Okay, all right. Too, and uh, Emily and Dave Thompson, great writers out of Nashville. And uh, it was pitched to me. And I was so shocked that Megan didn't want to sing it for herself because it seemed mm -hmm. like something that was right up her alley as well. But I guess it just didn't fit at the time for her record. And uh, so I immediately fell in love with it. And I was like, please, Dibs, I would love to have it if nobody, no other artists want to record it. And I was lucky they let me uh, put my voice on this tune because it's such a well-written song. Another one off there I enjoyed, House of Cards. This one had a good feel to it. It resonated very well with something like this, too. Talk about that one for us. Thank you. Yeah, this is uh, one I wrote a while ago, too, with uh, the producer of the song, Brian House. And uh, I, I went into this right just thinking about a relationship that where 
sometimes the physical aspect is good, but the actual relationship mm -hmm. is not good. But sometimes we stay when we shouldn't. And so it was based on that. And uh, I actually had a, a lot of fun with this tune recently. I just uh, had a birthday party where everybody had to pick one of my songs and dress up. And I chose House of Cards. So I like zip tied a whole bunch of cards together to make an actual outfit for the party. <laughs> That's a great story for a song, no doubt about it, too. We'll come back and talk about one here just a little bit, too, as well. But first, a performance, another song. What are we going to hear? So we thought we'd do something brand new for you. It's a okay, I love that. I heard, been heard by one audience. I think we've done this once before okay. at a songwriter's round uh, that I host in Oakville. But we've been playing it lately, and we really love it. So we thought we'd give it a try here on the show. Have you ever watched Yellowstone? Did you watch I've that I've seen bits and pieces of it. I love it. It's a great show. Okay, so in Yellowstone... Uh, when they the, they want to get rid of someone, instead of saying they're going to kill them, they say they're going to take them to the train station. <laughs> yeah. So we, I, I sat down with a couple friends of mine, and we took that that spin on uh, getting rid of someone. So this is called Train Station. Here we go. <laughs> Love it. A little bit of rock feeling that one too as well. Nicole Ray back here on the uh, backstage pass here. KKTC True Country 99.9. Of course, out there, our friends. Hightidecountry.net and the sportsguyspodcast.com. We're everywhere too out there. You can find your podcast out there that you listen to out there and always a fun time again. I'd love to have you come down. If you're in Nashville, give me a holler what? because you got to come out to this party. And that's how it's going to feel. It's like a rock feel. Then you lose like track of the show because you're lost in the music and... <laughs> 
you got to come back and kind of host a show. But that's uh, that's the good feel about it, too. Is, uh, again, March the 1st, 6 to 10. We'll probably start a little earlier than that. But uh, out there at the Wild Beaver Saloon on Commerce in Nashville, Tennessee, the live remote, we stream it all. And, of course, broadcasting on the Facebook pages of KKTC, our radio station out in Taos, New Mexico, and up into Pueblo, Colorado, ski town, of course, enjoying some skiing out there, too. Wish I was out there, Nicole, just like – taking in the snow i just i just, I don't know just cold weather it doesn't do it for me down here especially when it gets I'm to the really 20s nice but sometimes but that it's, it's not I'm yeah <laughs> <laughs> just to go the nice part would just go make a snow angel or like right. attempt to ride a snowmobile something like that you know that part's so. fun yeah if you're into outdoor <laughs> sports in the winter then it's more fun <laughs> But I do love uh, definitely Canada, and I can tell you right now, we've gone the summertime. It's beautiful, and it's just a great time to be. I call myself sometimes Can American. They're like, "What does that mean, Canadian American?" I got some good friends that are up there, so a little bit of both. So, <laughs> <bit of> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love out there too. Hey, let's have some fun. Uh, first, I want to ask you about this song because I thought it was really cool when it came out last July, I believe. And this was fun. Just called the message was fun in it. And sometimes songs don't have to be all that serious, but dirty. Let's talk about this one when it came out last year. Yeah, this is a, a super fun song. This is the the first, with Guilty being the second of uh, music towards mm-hmm. a new project, uh, definitely leaning into more of that rock era, which I'm very excited about. But yeah, Dirty is, I mean, to be really outright, is just a song about sex. <laughs> it's about <laughs> yeah. going out with somebody that you love and, and then going home and having fun. But it's just about the irony about how, you know, we kind of clean up ourselves good to go out just to get home and, and do it all. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, too, as well. Got to have a little sass and a little bit of a feel in a right? song with a direct message right there, too. Direct message that tells you really what the song <laughs> is all about. All right, let's have a little fun. Uh, the favorite Canadian food for Nicole Ray are foods. What do you get into? Oh, God. I feel like I'm the worst for Canadian foods because everybody loves poutine. That's like the big yeah. Canadian thing. <laughs> and I don't like it, which everybody gets really mad at me for. But I'm going to have to go with the classic. And obviously on some pancakes, but some good old maple syrup. That's a great Canadian yes. food. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one there too, no doubt. All right, uh, favorite shows. You mentioned Yellowstone. That could be one of them. Other shows to kind of binge watch your series to get into? Uh, Friends. I watched that. I've seen it a million times. I could mm-hmm. quote you the whole show if we sat here for a while. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I, I, I tend to rewatch things a lot. And Friends is one of them. And uh, The Office, Gilmore Girls. I, I, I repeat some, but Friends is definitely top of the list. <laughs> I like that, too. All right, kind of a dream stage or stages to step on. I know there's a lot of people that have the number one being the Opry, but are there others that you want to play kind of on the bucket list? Well, for me, growing up, I used to go to concerts a lot. I was really lucky. Uh, my my dad's office had tickets to the Air Canada Center in mm-hmm. Toronto, which is now the Scotiabank Center, I believe. Yep. It's still the Air Canada Center to me. But <laughs> I would go to lots of concerts there be, due to the work having tickets. And every time I would go to a concert there, I'd think, one day – I'm going to be on that stage instead of in the audience. So hopefully one day the Scotiabank Center. I like that one too. Now, if you were not a musician, what other occupation would you be doing? Gosh, that's hard because I have no other talents. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but actually, after I dropped out of university, I did go back to school online for a while um, to study fitness and nutrition. Uh, which I love. I mean, I'm like into health for myself and mm-hmm. have like learned a lot over my journey of school, just about positivity and how things change in the in the health world and how you know some things are meant to trick us and some things are actually for the health of our bodies. So I think I would probably delve into that world a little bit more. That or I would plan parties because we have a lot of ridiculous parties at our house, and I always like go all out with the theme and the decorating. Mm-hmm. So if anyone wants to hire me to decorate <laughs> your party, sign me up. <laughs> there you go. Interior design or professional decorating. Exactly. Which I'm, like, yes. <laughs> I might have to because I'm not an interior decorator. I have nothing to do. I let well, the I'm, wife use. I'll play yeah, hire you. Hire Nicole Ray, because I'd, I'd probably hire you, too, because, like I said, the wife does all the decor and everything of, of the house and stuff, and she knows she's got good taste and stuff like that, too, as well. All right, favorite toppings on a Nicole Ray pizza. What goes on it? Oh, I'm usually pretty simple and just a pepperoni, but I will say I like Hawaiian and pineapples do belong on a pizza for all those. They don't. (laughs) You brought it up and, uh, you know, I've been on that, not kick for me, but I can every once in a while just grab one of those and 
it, man, I'll tell you what's good. I don't know if you like it. Well, it's the only one I like from them. It's Domino's, but it's got um, free plug there too. Never mind. Anyway, like they need it. But uh, you put it in your deep dish and you put the Hawaiian on the deep dish, which is their pan, same thing. Yes. Um, and it comes out really good, I think. They, they are very good. We, uh, we're we Domino's people in this household. That's usually where we order our pizza from. <laughs> I love that too. All right, first song, when you ever step behind a microphone, no matter what age, what level of musician, music that you were in, uh, first song ever to sing behind a microphone, what was it? Okay, I think this is it, and there could have been something before this, but like as far as my memory goes, the first song I ever sang was in this like after school musical theater camp thing that I did, and I got my first solo, and the song was I Believe I Can Fly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still have a stuff. video of it, and like my mom's crying. And <laughs> I love it. All right, uh, this is always a fun one I do because no matter if it's Sirius XM or the highway or if it's any station up there, last song to spin on the radio, what artist and what song? So listen. Last to song. Like last song I heard on the radio? Yeah, just you heard or maybe it was your favorite or something okay. you last heard. I was like, when was I in the car yesterday? <laughs> Actually, you know what? Yesterday in the car, and shout out to a good friend of mine, I was listening to Sirius XM, which I love because they mm -hmm. played my music. So thank you. And uh, I heard a friend of mine, Peter Perez, they played his song, Mess of Me. So check that out. Right. And Peter Ooh. actually has a brand new song coming out in a couple weeks. So you can pre-save right. that now. <laughs> well, you tell Peter to come do my program too. We'll talk about it here on this uh, thing called the Backstage uh, Pass. Again, the single is called Guilty across all those uh, digital platforms out there too. Stream it, go get it wherever you download your music or Spotify, wherever you have a subscription to too as well. Mine is Apple Music, just of choice, but yours could be something totally different. But if it's out there too and it's by Nicole Ray, you'll want to listen to a lot of the collection of songs that we've talked about today on KKTC True Country 99.9 .9, and our friends at High Tide Country dot net too as well i want to thank you for kind of bearing with me over these last few weeks i was so glad to put this together and i knew when i had an open time slot i said i was going to go after her she's a genuine artist and looking forward to big thanks for her in the future thanks so much for being with me nicole and looking forward to doing this again thank you so much i really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me and uh we had a blast so thank you so much Come back anytime, no doubt. Again, grab Guilty across all those digital platforms. And, of course, we're back tomorrow. John Crond is going to finish out the week. And next week, Tay Bay comes on the show here on the Backstage Pass. Corey Marks in a few weeks. Wade Hayes. Yeah, we're jam-packed to Country Radio Seminar 2024. Nashville, Tennessee, February 28th to March 1st. And, of course, March 1st, live at the Wild Beaver Saloon on Commerce Street. Come by and see us as we're going to have a party in Nashville, Tennessee, too. And if you're in town, you bring the guitar, and we're going to have a blast, too. Nicole Ray here on the Backstage Pass. We'll see you soon tomorrow on the show. Thanks to all our sponsors. We'll see you soon. Take care.